Today we're going to take a quick look at how to create a simple camera rig and how to have it rotate around an object and after we've done that we're going to export that to a file format which should be easily editable in any video editing software. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, create a project file for this uh, workspace. It's a good idea to always uh, make a project file. To do this we're going to go to file, project window and we're going to have to make a project. First we click new, then you change the uh, current project to whatever you want the name to be. In this case I'm going to use camera rotate. Then um, if you go to location and click the folder, you can browse to pick where you want the actual file to be created. In this case I'm just going to put it um, where I put most of my folders or projects. It's a good idea to use this because it helps organize your whole uh, project in that it creates files and uh, places for everything you export from Maya to go to by default without you having to individually select where each thing goes. So to give you guys a reference I'm just going to load an image so this way we can uh, visualize what I'm doing as I rotate around the scene. Okay now that we have our object in the scene um, or in case building we're going to need to create a camera and then a curve. And then to do this, we're going to go to create. We're going to go to nerves primitive and turn off interactive creation. Once we have that done, we're going to click on circle and then we're going to scale it out a little bit to um, be around our uh, model, or in this case, it's going to be a house. We're going to move it out a little bit and then move it up a little bit. Next we have to create a camera. To do this we're going to go to create again, go to cameras and then click on camera. We're going to move the camera out a little bit just so we can click on it and so it's easier for you guys to visualize it. Now that we've made both the camera and the curve, we need to attach the camera to the curve. But before we do that, let's click on the camera and then change its name from camera one to something like a render camera. Now that we have that done, now we have to, before we attach the camera to the curve, um, I need to explain something about the timeline down here. This is going to be like any timeline you've ever used in Premiere or any other video editing software. And that each number represents frames and you can scrub through them by just clicking on it and scrolling through. Nothing's actually animated right now so it's not going to change anything. But let's change the frames in our scene to uh, something like 240 because Maya does by default 24 frames a second and we're gonna use um, we're gonna make this animation about 10 seconds long um, one thing we need to keep in mind is that we don't want the camera to show behind our model because in this case we have nothing there so um, instead of attaching the camera to the curve and make it uh, w when you attach to the camera to the curve it's gonna by default make the whole frames we set it to be one whole revolution so if we attach it right now, it would take 10 seconds or 240 frames to go all the way around the, um, the building. So we actually want half of that because we only want to show the front half, but we still want it to be 10 seconds. So to do that, we're going we're gonna to need to remember 240 times 2. So it's going to be 10 seconds in the front, 10 seconds in the back. To do this, we're going to make sure you go to Animation Tool Set. We're going to go to Animate, Motion Path, and click on Motion Path Settings. And I'll go to Edit, and I'm just going to reset it. Make sure you click start and end. And we're going to change the starting time and the end time to the frames we want to render. So in this case we're going to make sure it's double 480 like we talked about and starting at 1. Once you click uh, apply it's going to attach the camera to the curve. But watch as I scrub through from 0 to 240 it's only half of the revolution. What we want is not it to be from the back to the front, but from the left side of that building to the right side of the building. So the easiest way to fix this is to click on the camera and rotate it uh, 90 degrees in the Y axis. So you can type 90 in the channel box over here to the right. Now when I uh, scrub through the timeline, it's going to go from 0 to 240 and it's going to start at the left side of the house to the right side of the house, which is exactly what we want for this scenario. Now that we have that done, we want to check to make sure that the camera, uh, camera correction, sorry, camera angle 
and the timing of it is exactly what we want. An easy way to do this is to click on uh, this button, then go to perspective, or panel perspective, and then render camera. This will make two windows. The left one shows the uh, viewpoint from the perspective of the camera we selected or named previously. If we click on this resolution gate button right here, it will make a gray bar from the top and the bottom of the um, frame or workspace. And what this is, is this is the resolution of the, it's the current settings of the render settings and this is what it's going to actually render. Now when we scrub through here we can see that it's we're missing some part of our house. So to do this we're just going to expand the curve a little bit thus moving the camera back a little bit and we're going to move it up as well so um, the camera can see the whole house which is what we want to show. Now when we scrub through again we can see that um, it's going to show the camera, or it's going to show the house throughout the whole uh, 10 seconds without having the house disappear um, in between these resolution gates, which is well, areas that will not render when we render out the camera at the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a, something called a uh, play blast, which is a quick render without any lighting or anything, but it really helps um, get the timing down and get uh, the, the angle of the camera. So we're going to go Windows, Play Blast, and reset the settings. We're going to click Start and End again. We're going to start at uh, frame 1 and we're going to end at frame 240. I'm going to change the format to ABI, or sorry, uh, QuickTime, and then I'm going to change the quality to 100. I'm going to go to make sure my display size is to the previous render settings, which you can change whenever you want up there, but for now it's fine. I'm just going to make the scale uh, 1 and leave the frame panning at 4. I'm going to make sure I click save to file so I can view it afterward. Uh, you can change the name or the, uh, the file to wherever you want and then browse to make sure it's in the right area. If the project file is set up correctly, it should automatically go to the movies folder in the project file we created in the first part. Now when we click Play Blast, we should see, after a couple seconds, it render out a fast view of um, what we want to actually render. But in here we can see that it actually rendered the wrong camera angle. And this is a good reason why we do Play Blast, because if we spent 12 hours rendering out the whole scene and we came back and we saw those wrong camera angle, that's 12 hours wasted. Whenever that's done, it should automatically open up the window if you have QuickTime installed. And it should... Um, play the play blast we just rendered but again we um, play blasted the wrong camera angle and uh, this is a good reason to why we always play blast before we render because uh, this can only take 10 to 15 seconds to do the whole animation where the actual render could take anywhere from five hours to five days to fix the problem we had, what we're going to do is we're going to um, click on the left panel to tell my this is the current window I want to play blast. And just to double check, we're going to um, press spacebar to make it our only one. This way we can scrub through it just to double check everything again. And then if we play blast, it should just play blast from this camera perspective. So we're going to go to window, play blast again, and just say do it again. But you will have a problem if you don't close down QuickTime because it can't overwrite a file that's currently running. Now, as, as you can see, it's rendering the play blast, so we just give it a couple seconds to uh, go through all the frames. Again, I can't stress enough how important play blasting and animation is before you render it. You'll save yourself a lot of time down the road. Now that it's done, we just give it a couple seconds to open up, and then we can see the results. And as you can see, it's uh, almost exactly what we want, but um, again, without lighting or out any, without any effects. Just to make sure it's the right angles and the right um, time for each scene. And you can change the speed. Um, in the settings or we can do it uh, later when we edit the image or the file in Premiere. 
Good thing you can also do is um, make an infinite loop where it goes forward and backwards in Premiere by just uh, taking the file and playing it backwards. So the next step is to do something called a batch render, which is going to render everything we have with all the lighting and shadows and effects. To do this, we're going to go to render settings. We're going to make the file format to AVI. This will um, make the whole render one whole uh, movie file. You can change it to Maya TIFF or, or anything else if you want it to be individual frames as individual pictures. It's usually a bad idea to do that, but for this tutorial I'm just going to show you this way because it's easier. So we'll click on full frames under compression to make sure we don't lose any um, image quality. You can change the file prefix name and this will be the uh, way to identify which frames this project belongs to or which shot. It's, not, it's a good idea not to put a number behind it because it's going to add a whole bunch of numbers afterward uh, in order to tell which frame it is. So we're, again we're going to go to frame start 1, frame uh, end frame 240. Make sure the renderable camera is to the uh, camera name we set in the first, second part. In this case it's going to be render camera. And I like to change the presets to something a little nicer like HD 1080. You can change it to wherever you want. Uh, increasing this will increase the render time. I'm going to leave the resolution at 72 because it's not really important right now. And to actually start the batch frame, go to the render menu set, as you can see in the top left corner. We're going to render, batch, render options, and make sure we have use all available processors. 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 And we just click batch render again. And whenever you do this, uh, it takes a long time, and there is a possibility of my crashing, so it always um, asks you to save before, or it will save automatically. Uh, this process can take anywhere from a couple hours to a couple days. It all depends on how many frames you're rendering, how many lights, how many shadows. Okay, now we just wait for the file to finish rendering. Once that's done, it should be able to import to any uh, video editing software where you can edit it and do anything else you want to it. And that is the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching.